Hi everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. In case this is your first time watching one of my videos, hi I'm Leslie, I'm so glad to have you here. On my channel I talk about all things luxury in particular, handbags, but I cover a wide range of topics on here. I film unboxings, hauls, review videos, I really enjoy filming shopping vlogs and travel vlogs from time to time, plus I also throw in the occasional high street fashion like haul and styling video in there. So if that sounds like a thing, I would love for you to consider subscribing. So today's video is really exciting because I haven't filmed a tag video in quite a while, but Dale from Dale's Addiction recently tagged me to film the, okay, I think I'm getting it right. I think it's the five brands I'm intrigued by or like interested in, but haven't purchased from, but would be interested in purchasing from. I'm gonna try to figure out a more concise way of putting the tag uh, in the title of today's video. So yeah, the tag was started by Lisa from Luxury and Life in the Middle. I thought this video was super fun and I definitely was able to come up with five brands to include in today's video. So before I ramble on any further, let's get into the first brand, Moana. If you're a returning subscriber, this will come as no surprise for you because I did mention Moana quite a number of times. Um, in particular, I mean, they do do, do do, uh, they do do a monogram, like coated canvas. I'm not that keen on their coated canvas monogram because it seems a little too busy in my opinion. Granted, I, I did see Moana bags in the flesh when I was in New York last year, but I didn't take them off the shelves and look at them like in detail. So chances are there's a color combination of their coated canvas that would speak to me, but I'm more so interested in their leather bags. They are pretty pricey, um, but they are really well made. Moana is a very heritage brand, very under the radar, but they're even older than Goya and Louis Vuitton, and that says a lot. I'm especially intrigued by the Gabrielle bag. I just love the silhouette and the clasp closure mechanism is so fun. They also have a pochette version, so the Gabrielle pochette, which is remarkably similar to the Kelly pochette. I will be in Paris in a couple of weeks, and I'm definitely planning on going into the Moana boutique. I think it's like across from Goya, if I remember correctly. Is it like Rue Saint-Honoré, where there's also the large Louis Vuitton Place Vendôme store? And a little further down, you have Dior on one corner, two Chanel boutiques, including the Rue Cambon one, and like another um, couple of walks further down, you have the MS FSH. I think, yeah, okay. <laughs> Paris guide, Leslie, um, apparently. So yeah, as I mentioned, I'm going to Paris and I'm planning, like time permitting, of course, to go into the Mona boutique and actually try on the Gabrielle, which I didn't do in New York because I was, yeah, I wasn't planning on buying European brands in the US because, yeah, pricing and everything. But yeah, Mona is the first brand that I'm definitely intrigued by. With the second brand, I'm kind of bending the rules of this tag because it's actually a brand that I have purchased from before, but I don't have the bag anymore because, long story short, it ended up being defective in my view at least um, the brand had a different view and we had like some back and forth and it wasn't like the most pleasant customer service experience but yeah I ended up sending the bag back got my money back and called it a day I'm talking about Polen. Since then I think um, the whole like uh, return process and everything went down in 2020 since then a couple of years have passed and from almost everyone, I've heard like rave reviews, also when it comes to their quality, leather and everything. And they have such unique styles. I'm particularly interested in the numero 7, uh, so the number 7 bag. Also the numero 9, so the number 9. And another one that doesn't have a number associated with them. I think it's called the Berry, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. They have a lot of beautiful, unique shapes. And of course, for a full leather handbag, their price tags are really reasonable. The next brand is Fendi. I do own a pair of Fendi earrings, but like in terms of leather goods, especially handbags, I don't have any Fendi piece in my collection. I'm not that much of a fan of the baguette. Don't kill me, sorry. Um, also, I, I never watched like Sex and the City, so I don't have like an emotional attachment to the baguette from that perspective. The bag style just doesn't do much for me. Sorry, I, not saying that to offend anybody, but there are definitely a lot of bag styles from Fendi that do speak to me. Again, if you're a returning subscriber and you watched a couple of my other videos, it will come to no surprise that 
the Fendi first still kind of has a chokehold on me. I haven't been able to bring myself to purchase it, but that's definitely a bag that I'm really intrigued by. Also the peekaboo. I just adore the classic silhouette of the Fendi peekaboo and also like if you want to, especially I guess with larger sized um, peekaboos, you have the option to have the front thing kind of flap down and yeah, do this like peekaboo action. You know what I'm talking about. I'm rubbish at describing it, but yeah. By the way, either last week's video or like a couple of weeks ago, I uploaded a pretty rambly video um, about me not having a luxury wish list. That still absolutely holds true, but um, that also doesn't mean like me not having a luxury wish list doesn't mean that I don't like bags or anything. Um, just two separate kind of concepts. There are a lot of bags that I love and that I'm interested or intrigued by, but I just um, for me personally, I realized that the concept of having a wish list where I like consciously put items on it or take items off it, depending, um, doesn't really work out for me. Just to clarify that, I still stand by the video that I made and like the point that I don't have a luxury wish list. Continuing on with a brand that Dale also mentioned in her video, and I was like, yes, yes, um, and I'm talking, and that might be kind of a surprise for you. I'm talking about. Alexander McQueen. These like knuckle clutches, or they don't just come in clutches, they also come in like, yeah, shoulder strap bags, just really speak to me. And that might come as a bit of a shocker because I'm not someone that dresses like very edgy. I mean, I do have a leather jacket, <laughs> a faux leather jacket from Zara, and that's as edgy as it goes for me. But for some reason, I just adore the Alexander McQueen clutches and like bags with the knuckle details. Of course, they also have other bags, but yeah, the knuckle thing is definitely a talking point. I did stumble across a wallet on chain from Alexander McQueen in my local department store here, and they were like super marked down. I think I, I did take pictures. If I haven't deleted them yet, I'm going to insert them on the screen right here. So cute. They do have like a little tiny little skull on the front. Yeah, they had two color variations. I think even more. They had like a very, very chartreuse kind of green color wasn't my thing. And then they had a beautiful light green color, pretty close to Ver Criquet from Hermes, if you're familiar. Stunning with a gradient effect. It wasn't like one solid color. It did go from a lighter to a slightly darker shade. And that one was with gold hardware. And then they had one in white, off-white grayish against kind of a gradient and with silver hardware. I adored both. I think what bugged me about the green one was that the hardware, like the gold hardware, was very yellow. It did look slightly cheap as if I had like purchased um, a metal shoulder strap on Amazon. So that did put me off of the bag kind of, although the green color was beautiful. And on the white gray one, it had silver hardware and I'm not that much of a silver hardware person. So that might be why or how I was able to restrain myself from purchasing either of those wallet on chains. But yeah, Alexander McQueen is still a brand that I'm intrigued by. And the last brand on today's list is Mulberry. In particular, I'd be interested in the Alexa. I've tried it on. I think I've tried it on um, at my local boutique once, or at least a friend of mine did. She's also very interested in the Alexa. But we both kind of agree that we wouldn't be really comfortable with spending like full price on Mulberry because while we don't have a Mulberry outlet close to us, of course, there's like Bista Village, for instance. So I don't know about spending full price on Mulberry bags, but if I happen to stumble across a Mulberry bag at a good sale or like an outlet, I'd be definitely intrigued and uh, would consider picking one of those up. So that already concludes today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on the five brands I mentioned in today's video. And as I mentioned, this video is a tag video. And yeah, to keep the tag uh, going, I'm going to tag Megan from Train Girl Megan. I would love to know the five brands that you're intrigued by and interested in. Marlene Sedin, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, I'm going to link to all of their channels below, by the way. And yeah, sorry if I butchered your name. Then I'm also going to tag Jojo Lux and Emma Anders. Plus, of course, if I didn't mention you, but you want to join in on the tag, feel free to consider yourself tagged and definitely let me know once you've uploaded your video. Or if you don't have a YouTube channel, just drop your five brands um, with a little explanation in the comment section below. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye.